the public information officer for the Ramsey County Attorney's Office. I want to do a couple of housekeeping issues and uh, set a very basic ground rule. Just I know there's a lot of questions, um, and we'll get to those as just as soon as we can. Housekeeping is afterwards we will be sending out the county attorney's statement uh, in full, so uh, know that that will come to you shortly as soon as we can uh, push it out to everybody. Um, basic ground rules of those of you who have been here before, we just ask that you share who you are, where you're from, and what your question is. We don't recognize everybody, and that's uh, our apology. Um, another piece to think about is uh, this is an active and ongoing investigation. So um, the, the questions are going to have to be somewhat targeted to the broader uh, purpose of what the county attorney will address. Um, so keep that in mind when you do come up with a question uh, because we're not going to be able to address everything and that's the simple fact. So um, let's start with the county attorney's remarks. Good morning. Uh, before I begin my remarks, uh, I want to uh, first issue a call to our nation for peace. I know people are angry, frustrated, devastated, and they have a right to be. And I commend all of the thousands of people who have channeled their emotions into peaceful protests by coming together across this country to demand change. There is no justification for what happened in Dallas last night. As one of our nation's heroes, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, violence multiplies violence. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The recent events of the officer-involved shooting incident resulting in the death of Philando Castile in Falcon Heights are tragic and sad in so many ways. I understand many of the emotions being expressed by our community and elected officials. I too am disheartened by the tragic events that unfolded Wednesday night in our community. While we don't yet have all of the facts, we do know that the loss of Philando Castile is being mourned throughout our community. And I want to especially express my sincere and heartfelt condolences to his family, his friends, and school community at J.J. Hill Montessori. We must do better in our state and in our nation to improve police community interactions to ensure the safety of everyone in this country, but particularly the safety of African Americans who disproportionately lose their lives as a result. As you know, the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension has already begun its investigation and released preliminary information last night. My staff has been working closely with the BCA agents assigned to this case since yesterday morning. I've spoken to the superintendent of the BCA, Drew Evans, and he has assured me that they are making this investigation a top priority. I have asked for a prompt and thorough investigation both of these goals are equally important to uphold. Once they have concluded their investigation, they will present the case to our office for prosecution review. It has long been the practice of this office to present such cases to a grand jury. I believe there are benefits to doing so, however, I will decide how best to proceed at a later time after additional thought and conversations with my senior leadership staff. Regardless of whether the decision to prosecute is made by the residents of Ramsey County through a grand jury process or by this office, the law remains the same. The use 
of deadly force is justified only when necessary to protect the officer or another from apparent death or great bodily harm. In order to bring criminal charges against a police officer for using deadly force in the line of duty, Minnesota law requires the state to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the use of force was not justified. If the grand jury determines that charges are warranted in this case or this office makes that decision, I assure you that we will prosecute this case to the fullest extent of the law. In times like these, I understand that it is incredibly difficult to be patient. But above all else, in order to achieve justice, we must ensure that this process is carried out with the utmost integrity. It is incumbent upon us as investigators and prosecutors to not jump to conclusions, but to view our work as a sacred trust with our community. Our system of democracy depends on our ability to diligently follow the facts and remain faithful to the pursuit of justice. The last thing I want to add before I take questions is that regardless of the outcome of this case, it is clear to me that we need to come together as a community, law enforcement included, to improve our practices and procedures so we don't experience any more of these tragedies ever again. Thank you very much. And before, I'll just reiterate, we just had a time for a few questions, so I know you've got many. Um, just give us who you are, your, your organization, and then what your question is. Uh, Shermel Brogan is from CNN, so thank you for doing this. Um, there's been some criticism from, from the family, the band and me, with the investigators haven't been talking to them, haven't been telling them uh, what's going on. Do you plan to meet with the family and sort of, or have you met with the family, uh, tell them what, what your plan is, and no, I have not. Um, I suspect that the BC investigators are um, scrambling right now to um, undertake this investigation. I'm sure uh, there will be a moment for that when it's appropriate, uh, but I can't speak for the BCA as to when uh, they will do that with respect to our process. Um, we, we, we have staff working with the BCA, but ultimately we're not the investigative agency. We are the uh, prosecuting agency, and so our appropriate time to meet with the family is uh, at some moment when we have a chance to actually receive the case, and that hasn't happened. Uh, that's a part of a, an ongoing investigation, so I'm just not going to get into If you ask questions about the details of the investigation, uh, I, I, I can't go into that. And, and again, it really is about just upholding the integrity uh, of the process and the investigation, and that's one of the reasons why um, uh, investigators and people that are involved with it um, can't speak to uh, those issues because they could actually harm and undermine the investigation if information is getting out in the context of interviewing other witnesses and, and the like. So uh, it is very critical that um, uh, we can't address those issues right now. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, I am not aware of such a case involving um, uh, where there's a police shooting incident that resulted in death, uh, but I can certainly confirm that for you by trying to find some older records, but I don't ever recall. I've been the county attorney since 2010, uh, but I want to also make clear that, you know, a part of that process and all of that, you know, the law in the state of Minnesota uh, gives a lot of protections to police officers. And so, again, the law is the same whether uh, it's a grand jury or the prosecutor making that decision. Chad. Uh, Chad Fire Cross. Uh, you said before the apparent death or great bodily harm. Um, it's my understanding of law, of course, I'm not in that position, 
that the defense of the officer would just have to prove that they perceived that they were uh, under threat. And I, I wonder if you could talk about how difficult that is to prosecute. It, it is a very difficult standard. Um, uh, but there's also uh, an aspect uh, in which the actions have to be reasonable. And the Supreme Court has, the United States Supreme Court has addressed some of those issues. I don't want to go too much into uh, the interpretations of law because I don't even know what the facts are in terms of what's going to be presented to our office for us to review. Uh, but I think it's pretty commonly known, well known, um, that the way that the law is set up, it does, from a policy perspective, um, give protections to police officers and recognition uh, for the dangerous situations that they are in. Well, it certainly will be a part of uh, the evidence uh, without question. And so as from a standpoint of the investigation and prosecution, we have to look at everything. And so that's a part of the picture. Um, and there'll be other uh, things, uh, facts uh, that will be gathered and that will be all a part of um, uh, the investigation that will be completed and then presented to our office uh, for prosecution review. And so. The, the Facebook video, um, in many ways, um, it being transmitted to so many people uh, and then having the reaction from uh, this community, the nation, the world, uh, it certainly, um, I understand the gravity of all of that because everybody, this has become um, something that people have expressed a lot of concern about because what is depicted in the video uh, I mean, it makes you sad to just watch all of that unfold. But again, I think the public needs to understand uh, we have to have the total uh, picture, and that's what investigators are looking at. Two more questions. Let's go to the fence. Uh, Mr. Smith, New York Times, sir. Um, I'm, I'm curious. You talked about you know, you're going to make a decision at a later date on whether to use a grand jury in, in this case. Can you talk about some of the factors that you'll be weighing and deciding how to proceed on that and in a timeline for making that decision? Well, I. Uh, in recognizing the gravity of the situation, you know, having conversations uh, with my good friend Mike Freeman, the Hennepin County attorney, uh, who um, did make a change uh, from not using grand juries to uh, having uh, his office ultimately make that decision. Um, I felt that um, for me, I needed to provide a little distance and, and time so that I could have some space to think about all of the various issues and. Uh, talk with my senior leadership staff about what the best course is. And so there's not any type of um, way that I'm going to reach this decision. It's just I just need a little time and, and, and thought put into it from, from my perspective. Um, I, I think this is um, uh, a very uh, extraordinary case in terms of this is not, doesn't happen on a regular basis. And uh, I just need that time to kind of think that through. Last question, Rob Olson. John Rob Olson with Fox 9. You said you asked the DCA for a prompt but thorough investigation. Did they give you any sense for how long that could be? Uh, they have not, and I would uh, ask that you ask them in terms of if they have a particular timeline. Um, and I think, as I said, the, we want this investigation to be prompt because I think that's very, very important. But at the same time, it needs to be thorough. And those things sometimes can compete against one another, but I believe that both can be achieved. Um, and I know uh, that the Department of Public Safety, BCA, will put uh, every resource uh, into accomplishing those two goals. Okay, thanks everybody. Great. Thank you very much. Quick reiteration, we will be sending out the uh, statement uh, very shortly. Um, and if our technology works, we're going to be including uh, sometime after uh, uh, just a clip of everything you just saw here. So uh, those of you who were able to make it, you know who you are, you'll have the pleasure. All right. And we'll also be available for follow-up questions if you need clarification on certain points. But to John's point.